This video will discuss phase diagrams. So a phase diagram in thermodynamics is a graph of the equilibrium phase of a substance as a function of pressure and temperature. All right, so typically, as I mentioned, chemical and physical processes are occurring at constant pressure and temperature. Usually they're exposed to an external atmosphere of a given pressure and that atmosphere has a given temperature, which isn't subject to change easily. So the quantity of interest when we have a constant temperature and pressure is going to be the Gibbs energy for the criterion for spontaneous processes. So the Gibbs energy is a function of temperature and pressure, and the equilibrium phase at a given temperature and pressure is going to be the phase with the lowest Gibbs energy. So examples of the phases are things that we're all familiar with, solids. So when a solid exists, the Gibbs energy of the solid is lower than the Gibbs energy of a liquid, gas, and whatever other phases there are. There can be multiple solid phases, multiple liquid phases, but in the most simple case, there will just be three. For liquids, whenever you have a liquid, the Gibbs energy of it is lower than the Gibbs energy of the solid or the gas. For whenever you have a gas, the Gibbs energy of the gas is going to be lower than that of the solid or the liquid. And for things like water, for water there are many different kinds of solid phases. So, the, so uh, water ice has many different kinds of phases, so you have to specify which kind of water ice you're talking about at a given temperature and pressure. But we're not too concerned about uh, that point right now. Okay, so some features of our, our phase diagram here. Typically what we have is along our x-axis is the temperature and along our y-axis is the pressure. So we see a region here, usually on the left, where we have the solid being the equilibrium phase. There's a region usually in the lower right where the gas is the equilibrium phase and then somewhere between those two, uh, starting at some finite temperature and pressure is the liquid phase. All right, some other features of the phase diagram. We have the solid gas coexistence curve. This is uh, this light blue line down here. At the coexistence curve, the Gibbs energy of two phases is equal to one another. So solid gas coexistence, the Gibbs energy of the solid is equal to the Gibbs energy of the gas, and they're both less than the Gibbs energy of the liquid. So there's no preference for solid or gas at this coexistence curve. They can coexist to, with one another, and depending on the amount of heat that is input or removed from the system, you can get various, uh, various fractions of the system in solid or gas. So the so-called phase transitions occur at some point along one of these coexistence curves, where the Gibbs energy of the two phases is equal. Additionally, we have the liquid gas coexistence curve, the boundary between the liquid phase and the gas phase. Gibbs energy of the liquid and gas are equal. Both of them are below the Gibbs energy of the solid. We also have the solid liquid coexistence curve, where the Gibbs energy of the solid and liquid are equal, and you can trans you have a phase transition between solid and liquid, both of them having a lower Gibbs energy than the gas. All right, so along uh, this liquid gas existence curve, you would have vaporization or condensation. Along the solid liquid coexistence, you could have melting or freezing. And along the solid liquid or along the solid gas coexistence curve, you could have sublimation or deposition. All right, so those are some of those points that I mentioned. We also have the triple point. This is the single point where the equal where the Gibbs energy of all three phases are equal. Gibbs energy of the solid is equal to the Gibbs energy of the liquid and the Gibbs energy of the gas. So there's a single point in our phase diagram where the Gibbs energy of all three phases is equal and we get a single triple point. If there are multiple phases you could have triple points between any combination of three phases but in the typical case we just have our solid liquid gas so there's one triple point. Something like uh, water ice where there's a uh, you know 10 or more different kinds of solid phases we could have a number of different triple points but it's when three 
uh, individual phases are in equilibrium with one another, that gives us a triple point. All right, some words that are used to describe these phases. Solid and liquid are what are called condensed phases because the volumes of those are approximately constant and they don't, they don't change their volume uh, very quickly with pressure. They're condensed and the particles are interacting with one another and, and uh, adjacent to a lot of other particles. Liquid and gas are what are called fluid phases because they can flow past one another. Their neighbors are not rigid, they change all the time, and they can uh, change their shape to take the shape of whatever container they're being held in. All right, so uh, also in these, also a point on this graph that we can mention is called the critical point. Um, that's what we mentioned during the properties of gases. So the critical point occurs at the critical temperature and critical pressure. So that, that results in some uh, properties of gases that are mentioned uh, back in that chapter on the behavior of gases. All right, so we can describe how many phases are in equilibrium with one another by the following kind of equation. We have F, which is the number of degrees of freedom. That's the number of thermodynamic parameters that we can change independently of one another and not change what part of the phase diagram we're on. We have P, which is the number of phases that are in equilibrium with one another. So this is probably the simplest equation you'll see in all of physical chemistry. F equals 3 minus P. So what this means is, in general, there's going to be one phase which is in equilibrium. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So for a general temperature and pressure, usually you're in a single phase and you can alter the temperature or the pressure and you are still remaining in that phase. Along a coexistence curve, we have two phases that are in equilibrium that are at the minimum Gibbs energy. So 3 minus 2 is 1. So along a coexistence curve, we could change the temperature, but we're not free to choose the pressure there because for a given temperature, there's a, there's a required pressure for that coexistence curve and vice versa. So when two phases are in equilibrium, we can change one variable freely, but not the other. And at the triple point, there are three phases in equilibrium. So 3 minus 3 is 0. So there's only a single point <clears throat> in the phase diagram at which the three phases can be in equilibrium, because if we vary either of them, we'll go away from that triple point.